Let me take a few seconds just to give you a quick preview of this video and the stuff I'm using. What I'm showing is a technique for tapering off your amperage along with the back step technique for crack sensitive alloys as well as for avoiding distortion. I'll be using a number 10 clear cup out of this navigator kit here, a new product on weldmonger.com, a strong hand TIG torch holder, and a brand new product that will be available in October 2024, the Weldmonger dual flow meter. Reason for the dual flow meter in this video is I'm doing a little test weld in this back purge fixture. 25 to 30 CFH on the torch gas with the 10 cup, 20 to 25 CFH on the purge gas. Problem with aerospace alloys is a lot of them are very crack sensitive. 17-7 pH, Inconel 718 are two common metals that you might test on. They're very crack sensitive. Even when you taper amperage slowly, if you do it in one spot, you can wind up with a crater crack. Here's a technique to avoid that. To show this back step technique, I'm just going to use plain carbon steel. It's 041 thousandths thickness, but I'm going to use a slight gap, about a 32nd of an inch gap. And that's going to help avoid distortion and help me see where I'm going. I just finished up another video using 312 stainless for filler metal on some high carbon steel. So I'm going to go ahead and use that just for kicks on this test weld too. First thing is to get a tack on each end. If you were taking a test like this, you would probably be using 1 16th diameter electrode. I'm using 332 here, but I've got a really nice sharp tip on it, so I'm getting a really crisp arc start anyway. I like to add a little bit of extra on these tacks, more than the minimum anyway, and that is to give me just a little half a second extra when I come off attack or weld to attack. The back step technique is where you weld a short bead and then you back up and you weld to the previous bead. That might not make sense to you right now, but it will in just a minute. I'm going to weld this six inch piece in thirds. So I'm only going to weld about a two inch run here to the end tack. 47 amps is all it takes. Would take less than that if I wasn't in this chill fixture. The good thing about a clear cup is you can see a little bit ahead of where you're going. So I can see a good bit ahead when I'm coming up on this end tack and I can prepare for it. Doesn't catch me off guard so I, I see that tack, I see the front of the puddle run into it, I start backing off the amperage and backing up. And then right away I'm going to back up about another two inches and do the same thing except this time instead of welding to the very end obviously I'm going to be tying in to the previous weld. But again with the clear cup kind of lighting things up I'll be able to see ahead of myself when I get there and so it won't catch me off guard. But I don't want to back off the amperage right away. I want to blend in. I want to overlap that thing, add a little bit less filler as I take two or three dabs and then start to taper that amperage while I keep moving the torch to create kind of a comet trail or teardrop effect. Lighting up on that end tack, having put a few more dabs on it, gives me a little bit of leeway there so I won't melt that end away. Now it's just lather, rinse, repeat here. Making short runs like this you really don't have to feed filler rod which is a benefit. Again when I tie into that previous weld start adding less filler, keep the torch moving, start tapering amperage down to nothing as I keep the torch moving. That's what has worked for me in preventing crater eyes and cracks. Let's take it out of the fixture now, see how the penetration side looks. If you butt a joint like this up with no gap and weld it start to finish, you're going to have a good bow in it, a good bit of distortion. This is rather flat. And the areas where I tied in and tapered off like a comet trail, no eye, no cracks. The front side doesn't look all that great, mainly because that blotchy discoloration and whatnot. But there's hardly any distortion in this piece, and that's the benefit of backstepping. Let's take a look now at what happens when you let off the amperage quickly without tapering off. See that dot in the middle there? That shows up big time on an x-ray. And on certain alloys, you'd almost certainly have a crack in there too. If you want to hang around a few more minutes, the rest of this video is a flat out commercial for the kit I use in this video. So if you want to bounce, that's cool too. But there's some good tips and some good tight arc shots. And I've got a ceramic version of this kit too, but this video is about the clear version. Let's take a look at the number 7 here. 
A number seven is a good choice for aluminum and steel. You can see how far ahead I can see. It just really lights everything up like a light bulb. In fact, it's a lot like a light bulb. It's a tungsten up inside glass. It lets us see a lot of detail, and that's why I use it for shooting videos. Let's take a look at some carbon steel beads now using the number seven cup. About 129 amps. This is about a quarter inch steel. It's just some practice beads. But when you are overlaying beads and trying to overlap that previous bead by a half, being able to see exactly where everything is, is a, is a pretty big benefit. The sweet spot on argon flow rate seems to be about 14 to 21 with the number 7 cup, whether you're doing steel or aluminum. It's just that for aluminum you don't want to go too high. Look at how this is lighting up that little scribe line that I'm trying to follow there. Then there is the number 8 Pro Clear Cup. Also a great cup for aluminum as well as stainless steels and carbon steels. If you've been watching my videos very long at all, you know I'm a big advocate of welding aluminum just to get better all around at TIG welding anything. And that's because of the filler rod hand. You have to feed so much more filler with aluminum that it gets that filler rod hand up to speed quickly. And then when you go back to welding steel or stainless steel, it's just much easier. The 8 Pro lets you use a little bit longer stick out than the 7 does. And that's a benefit, but the main benefit I think is just the way it lights everything up. I think you can see that right here. This is really just illuminating the path. I can see the cleaning action next to the bead. I can just see everything so much better. This is carbon steel square tubing. I have found a lay wire technique using a 332 rod really helps keep the puddle clean on square tubing because you won't melt through it and pull the oxides in to the bead. Now we're going to step up to a little bit different arrangement here. This is the Jazzy 10 Clear and it's got the secondary double diffuser in there. That is a difference maker, especially for things like aerospace test welds. Here's a, a weld in a fixture. It's a practice weld on regular carbon steel, which is actually a really good practice, but, but look how it's just lighting everything up. I can see where I'm going, I can see where I've been, and as I weld up to this end tack here, I can see it a good half inch to an inch before I get to it, and I can prepare for it, and I can start getting ready to let off on the foot pedal. But here's what I'm talking about. When I'm coming up on that tack, I watch it as soon as that puddle runs into that tack, I start backing off that amperage and back up the arc a little bit, and this prevents blowing the end away, and it prevents defects. Now we're going to watch that again in slow motion, because I think that's another valuable lesson there. Right here, I start watching really closely the front of that puddle. And I get off a few amps before it runs all the way to the front. And then back up as I taper off as low as the machine will go, which in this case is about 5 amps. Great gas shielding and great visibility. The number 12 clear cup comes in this kit with the titanium cover. But you can remove it if you want to look through the cup or keep it on there for a little added protection. You'd be surprised at how long a stick out you can use with this cup at about 25 to 30 CFH. You don't, you don't always need to look through the clear part of the cup, but you can when you need to if you're welding up into a corner or if something's in your way and you just can't get your head in there right. Look at that good shielding right there. That's a big argon envelope. Let's look at a puddle from a little bit different angle here. Same Furic 12 clear cup. When you have really good gas shielding, even on plain carbon steel, which is what I'm welding here, the puddle just flows easier. And not only that, but it flows with less amperage a lot of times. When a puddle gets sluggish with oxides, a lot of times it requires a few more amps to move the puddle. The kit I just showed you was for 17, 18, and 26 style torches. It's got a Furic adapter kit inside of it. This is the 920 version. It has this, this regular 45V44 gas lens for 920 torches. The great thing about a kit is you know everything will fit your torch. You just have to identify which torch you have. We've got plenty of information on the store on how to do that. Hey, thanks for watching. I really appreciate your support.